welcome back to Movement Medicine Mystery School. Today we are going to continue to dissect what a narcissist is and what they look like and get to the truth of what nobody else is really saying out there. Now, I've been watching a lot of other YouTube channels that talk about narcissism and toxicity and, and how to deal with narcissists, and the truth is that no one has a really good method for identifying these people. Uh, usually they go about it via their words and their behaviors, which can be very confusing because all of that can look so similar to what we would call a healthy person. Um, and as I continue to be involved in a world where there is narcissism and I can't seem to get it out of my life for many different reasons, um, I am coming to this conclusion and starting to work with a new theory that these types, these types of energies are a different breed of people. Now stay tuned to this channel. If you haven't subscribed, definitely go do that because this theory is going to revolutionize the way that you move in the world if you've been dealing with this type of energy for a long time. Um, part of what I'm going to do today is help you understand through using the cast at People TV or People Blog, I don't even know what it is, I'll have all of the information down below, but by using what they say about Luke P and helping you to understand what is really happening behind the scenes and what our typical reaction is when we try to find um, or try to work with this type of energy, it's just going to clear up so much stuff. Now, I also want you to know that I'm going to do a little bit of what's called an extended video. I want to be able to show you the body language but so that I don't get flagged for um, the copyright stuff and also to help support this channel so I can continue to bring this message forward. Um, I don't want to go and get sponsors and do all that kind of stuff. So I'm going to be my own sponsor and I'm going to start putting extended teaching videos up on Movement Medicine University so that you can get the material and you can educate yourself and you can become an expert at how to redirect your energy away from these type of people because it's really going to take all of us that are not this breed, and again I'm saying that they are a different breed, all of us that are not this breed to stop educating this breed because all that is doing is actually helping them evolve to become more clever in order to do the same thing that they're doing. Um, so it's going to take all of us to stop educating them, to educate ourselves, to stop feeding them our energy, because that's the main thing that they want to do, and to redirect our energy into creating the world that we do want to create. So I'm going to start doing little teaching segments after these main videos on YouTube. You can go get those for a minimal price that will help support this channel and invest in your education so that you can create the world you want to create. All the links will always be right up at the top down below. All right, so let's jump in. This is from People TV. Um, the first thing that these women say, and I can't put it all up here, I'll put it on um, the extended over there so that you can see that. Um, but they all say that they can't believe, there's four women in there, Patty, Jody, and I didn't get the name of the other two interviewers, but they all say they can't believe this is happening. That is a sign you are dealing with a toxic, narcissistic type personality disorder of any kind, any type of personality disorder, bipolar, sociopath, psychopath, all right? So all of those, if you ever have that, that idea or that hit of like, I can't believe this is happening right now, red flag, it's waving a red flag, believe it, know that it's happening, know that it's for real, and you're dealing with a personality that is a different breed than you. All right, um, but this is also the trick, okay? So one little side note here is if you happen to also be a different breed, this toxic, narcissistic, sociopath, you don't believe you are that breed, you believe you're an empath, and you don't associate with all of these other people that are actually really your type. So it's a little bit tricky for those of us that are the empath breed. And again, I stick with me on this channel. I'll be explaining this theory in coming weeks and months so you can understand it from this angle. And it will help you work through all of this stuff so much better and be able to raise yourself out of this low, heavy, heavy energetic vibration of ah! 
yeah, that's how I'm feeling today. If it's happening and you're saying, I can't believe it, believe it, you're working with a different type of breed of human beings. That's something to keep in mind. If I haven't said this already, go check out the link below the extended so that you can watch this along with me. It's only like a five minute segment, but you're gonna be wanting to put it on pause and come back and watch this so I can help you understand what's really going on in the narcissist breed behind the scenes. Okay, so one of the women goes on to say that, um, she, he, you know, they're talking about, I can't believe this is happening. He comes back and wants to propose to her. And this one of the women on the cast actually says, well, no means no. But Luke P actually thinks, well, yes or no doesn't mean no. And she's like, well, yes, it does. Okay, so let's stop there. If you go watch that, it'll be much more clear than what I just interpreted for you. But basically, that is another red flag. That is another key is um, they don't believe in the word no for them. All right. So it's a totally different world. You are not going to be able to communicate to them the word no. Your actions and your behind your actions, your intention, your energy is going to have to be clearer and clearer. And it's just going to have to like shut the door as quickly as possible because that's what they're looking for, y'all. They're looking to engage in your energy to get your energy from you. And then if you go back and watch my first video, you'll see that he did that. He got Hannah to engage with him so he could get an energy fed, he could get an energy meal off of her so that he felt charged. And it's actually this kind of like crazy way of thinking is he got her to react as if she was crazy so that he could prove in his world that she is crazy so that he could prove to her that she is crazy and that she needs to be saved by him. So that is what they're looking for when it gets to this point in a narcissistic relationship is they're looking to feed off of you. If they can get you to react in a heavy way, it's an energy. Like if they can get energy out of you, then they know they still have you and they know they can feed off of you. And they're looking to get that crazy reaction out of you so that they can prove in their mental construct and reality that you are crazy. All right, we have so much more, so let's keep going on. Go on to talk about the women on the cast. Go on to talk about how they've talked more than about Luke P this season than Hannah. Classic. This is narcissism at its, um, can we say, best? <laughs> Do we really want to label it best? Not quite sure, but this is classic, classic. Any type of personality disorder is they want the focus to be on them and they will, they have worked their, their patterns in their mind. So it can be a lot of unconscious patterns at this point because it's just habits for them in order to work any situation in any given relationship so that it becomes all about them. But they might say, oh, but I don't want it to be all about me. Stop making it about me. But even in doing that, they're making it about them. Part of my goal in educating you and, and bringing this into the Movement Medicine Mystery School is to help you identify these types and be able to stop feeding them ASAP so that you can redirect your energy back to where it needs to go, which is into your life. So that is all we're trying to do. I'm only giving you the behind the scenes so you can mentally start to understand that this is a different breed of human that we're working with and to stop thinking that they actually have any remote similarities in their mental constructs to us. They have none, y'all. I have tried for 20 years to understand and everything that I've read is always coming at an angle from an empath, an empathetic type personality, which is what we call a classify normal these days, um, which is really interesting. I want to do more research. Total side note, but Freudian psychology, I would bet, is actually based off of a narcissistic toxic type of man. And this is where all of our modern day psychology comes from. So very interesting to note. I'm happy that psychology has moved so far away from that to the fact that it's actually now seen this as a different type of personality, that it's a personality disorder. However, I don't feel like that's far enough. I really do feel like we need to stop looking at them as if they need to be like us because that is just not even remotely in their horizon, anywhere in their psyche, in their consciousness. And the more we attempt to try to make them like us or by starting 
in the presumption that they think like us underneath everything that's going on in them, the more resistance we're creating and the more narcissism is going to show up in our society. And there's a whole bunch more. Again, stay tuned to the channel. I know I've plugged this many times, many Easter eggs, but I'm going to have more as I develop this theory for myself and be able to bring it towards you. So yes, classic narcissism, they always try to make it about them, even if they have like, oh no, I don't want it to make it about me. And, and even if they seem to get it more about you, it's actually still really about them. So it's very convoluted how they do that, but they do it very well. So somehow it gets turned over to Jody. I think we're only probably like a minute into this thing, y'all. We still have so much more goody stuff to go. Um, and she says about this, that it's become about Luke P more than Hannah. She says it's a lot of, a lot of it is ego. He struggles with pride. He doesn't know how to accept the fact that he's being rejected. He wants clarity and closure. Um, and she says, well, the fact that Hannah said no to you, that she doesn't want to be with you, is clarity and closure. So she's not really sure. Jody, the woman that's getting interviewed, isn't really sure what he's looking for. And if you listen to her body language note, she has a lot of uptalk, which means she's not very clear about any of this and any of what's going on between Luke and Hannah. And she's not really, really understanding what this type of personality is, what this type of breed is. Um, so the things to note about that is um, he doesn't think he struggles with ego. Again, he does not think like our breed thinks, like empathetic people, um, which I would say make up about 80 to 90% of the population at this point in time. Um, he doesn't think like us. It, he doesn't accept rejection because he assumes that he knows Hannah better than him or better than she knows herself. And so he, he can't understand, even in a remote sense, that this is rejection. He thinks that she's crazy and that he is there to prove that to her so he can save her. That's what he is actually thinking, y'all, something along those lines. Um, he doesn't want clarity and closure. That's not why he's there. He's there to try to prove to Hannah that he is the one that's sane, that she's the one that is insane, and that he has all of the tools she needs to be in a safe and happy and beautiful relationship if she chooses him. So that is what he's there for. He is not there for clarity or for closure. He is there for his own mission, which is to prove his reality correct to him and to everybody else. So then the interview goes on and it goes to Patty, who is, I believe, the redheaded woman. And she says, do you think he has grown? Oh, she's been asked, do you think that he has grown from this experience? And she actually gets this right. No, he has not grown from this experience because she mentions a couple different things in the interview that happened at Luke um, at the Men Tell All. You know, he says he's grown so much from this experience, but right before that, he says he wouldn't change a thing. So this is, again, classic, classic narcissism, toxic type personality disorders. They will say one thing, and then the next thing out of their mouth, they will totally, totally contradict themselves. And yet we are so trained to only pay attention to the words in such a way that we miss it. And even if we go back and try to challenge, if we don't miss it and we go back and try to challenge it, they will keep you in the words and they will keep saying the right thing. They, will, they, know, what, they know what the culture expects out of them at this point, so they will say the right thing and they think they are doing the right thing. They honestly think they are doing the right thing by saying the right thing, but they have no interest in changing. There's no, because they don't believe in their reality that they're wrong. They believe that everybody else around them is wrong and that everybody else around them is lost and needs to be saved. And we'll get into some of these expressions and what people said about him later as far as he's had enough, um, enough of a lesson by just being humiliated on this public national TV show. Uh, but anyways, yeah, they're not there to to be changed. They have no interest in being changed. They don't believe they need to change. So if somebody doesn't even have like a 0.001% idea that they need to change, they're not going to change. And that is this type of breed. And they don't have this idea of punishment. Okay. Again, this comes up later in the conversation between these women is like, do you think he's been punished enough? 
by being humiliated. He doesn't think he's been humiliated. He thinks that everybody else is humiliating themselves based on what they're saying and the way that they see reality is so skewed according to his view of reality. And his view of reality, of course, is the correct one. So he thinks that anything that we would see as a natural consequence, i.e. Hannah rejecting him, isn't a rejection. He sees it in his mental construct, in his reality. He tells himself, Hannah is crazy. Hannah lost out. I am so scared for her. She doesn't know what's going to happen to her if I'm not in her life. Um, it could just go on and on and on like this, y'all. He doesn't see that he's being rejected. That is, There's no punishment for him. He thinks that she is pushing him out of his life, or she's pushing him out of her life, and that she's the one that's having the consequence. That is how these people think. So the beautiful American, African-American host um, says that this is a classic case, case of toxic masculinity um, and that this was where the term comes from. So yes, this again, I would say is exactly um, where this, this gets there from, but I think we've started to use this term toxic, toxic masculinity, and it's, it's almost like a piecemeal. I mean, it's almost like, um, let me cookie cutter it for you. Let me, let, let me cover it with some cookie dough or some, what's the word I'm looking for y'all? It's, it's, let me, let me make it a little bit nicer than calling somebody a narcissist. And it's partly because we throw that term around narcissism so much these days. It, it goes further than that. This again is a different breed and we need to, as the rest of the culture wakes up to this different breed being a different breed. We need to be able to understand it from that point of view. I think if we want to ever see true healing, not in them, not in them, we got to let that go, but true healing in us and true healing uh, to move away from political, religious, spiritual, yoga, teachers, anyone that has this type of energy that ends up oftentimes in authority over us. If we want to stop that, we need to start seeing that it's a different breed and that we need to cut it out from our life. I know this sounds really harsh um, and I'll explain the theory as to why that is as this channel develops uh, and we need to be able to redirect our energy towards going where we want to go in our life, which is to create the world where people look like us. They are empathetic. They know how to move forward with real growth, not just in their words, not just in their kind of behavior, but really honest to God growth in their evolution of their emotional and adult maturity. And then the interview goes on and it starts to talk about Devin. And I'm going to actually, this is the part that I'm going to put in the extended because I want to get really in depth with that, even though I know this is going really in depth. Blonde headed interviewer asks Patty, the redheaded woman, what do you think it would take to prove he has changed? So this is the wrong question to start with, but let's go ahead and um, hear what Patty and Jody both say. So Patty, the redheaded woman, says, I would hope that he would watch it back and see the error of his, well, everything. I would hope that the people in his life that surround him, some of them could knock some sense into him. Then Jody, the blondish brownish woman, says, she goes on to think, um, to say, I think what actually needs to happen is someone to sit down with, he needs to sit down with someone he trusts and loves who does know him and watch episode for episode and explain what is wrong in a non-attacking way. If it is coming from someone he is already comfortable with, then he could maybe kind of understand. All right, y'all, none of this is going to happen. There is maybe a 0.001% chance, based on the statistics, there's a book out there called Why Does He Do That? I don't remember the author, um, but he worked with over 2,000 men classified as MPDs or some type of personality disorder. And he said that maybe one or two at the most actually may change, and they may change by having complete psychological assistance, meaning like almost every minute of the day, there had to be a professional there being like, okay, no, nope, that's wrong. Nope, that's wrong. Nope, that's wrong. Um, and then they kind of made a change. This is why I go back to this is a different breed. Um, 
they have no interest in changing. I said all of this earlier, they have no interest in changing. So they won't change. <laughs> They're not gonna change. Somebody has to have just a remote idea that there needs to be a change. They might say, oh yeah, I'm open to change. They might, again, say the right things because they're culturally brought up in this culture where we're talking about change and evolution. So they might say it, but they don't actually mean it. There's no intention. There's no energy behind the comment. So you can't, there's not going to be proof of change because he can't, they're, they're not interested in changing. And yes, that sounds like an ultimatum, but this is what we have to realize with this personality, this different breed, because if we don't, we're gonna continue to put our hope and our efforts and our energy into them, which is exactly what they want, because they want to change us into their reality. They want to be able to continue to pull and suck and, and be a vampire on our energy in order to help fully get us to see the world like they do and put us in their square little peg hole just as much as we're trying to put them in our round our round peg hole right so we're both trying to change the other and someone just has to stop that's where i'm coming from so we are the ones that are going to stop trying to change them stop trying to help them because they don't believe they need help they don't know that they need help. They have no desire to change. So let's not put our energy there. Second of all, they have been able to wrap everybody else up in their life that stays in their life of free will. Um, and it's not really free will a lot of times. It's, it's more manipulation and control. They have gotten those people to stay in their life doing the exact same things that he is doing to Hannah and everybody else in that world. So to think that somebody could sit down and talk some sense into him, the only thing that's going to happen, y'all, is that person, Luke Pierre, whoever it is, is now going to have more knowledge and more wisdom, and it's wisdom in his world and his reality and his breed. He is going to evolve his ability to be able to manipulate and control through words, by saying the right thing, by looking like he's doing the right thing, that much more cleverly. So it's gonna be that much harder to understand what's really behind all of the energy and the intentions of that energy. That's the only thing sitting him down and being like, you did this wrong, you did this wrong, you did this wrong. So now he has in his awareness what not to do so that he can look like everybody else and fool that many more women. And I think it was Patty who says at the end of the interview, he re she really hopes that he's learned from this experience that he would never, ever lose his job or, you know, that this wouldn't leak into the rest of his life. Well, A, this is a type of person, a type of breed that is like this in every area of his or her life. They just know how to manipulate and control the energy in such a way so as to best protect them from seeing the world in a way that they don't want to see it. You know, and it's the same thing on our side, right? We don't want to see the world from their point of view, so we try to convince them to get into our point of view and in our world. And this is why I keep saying this is a different breed. It's an old breed of human that we no longer need, and we're waking up to that, and that is why it's coming to a forefront right now. So Mateo, there's a comment about Mateo and how he sees pain on Luke's face. It's not pain, but since that's body language, I'm going to get to in that in, um, in the extended so that we can actually look at the actual footage for that and see why it's not pain. I'm just reading my notes. I hope it's enough for him to kind of take a step back and look at his behavior. Why are these people coming at me this way? Again, he is not thinking that. He is thinking, oh my gosh. All of these people are crazy. They don't understand how to really see the world. And I'm going to shut up now because I understand that I am outnumbered. But when we go through the body language, you'll see how he's pursing his lips and he's really pissed off and he's really holding back something that he wants to say. And it has to do with his point of view and his reality that he sees the world through. Um, okay. And then the blonde asked Jody and Patty at the end, 
I would hope, uh, or should this affect him, Luke, or should it stay on the show? Patty says, I would hope as long as it doesn't seep into his professional life. You know what I mean. I don't want him to lose his job. I want him to not do this in the next relationship. I want him to have a new outlook on how to treat humans, women specifically. I want him to sort of catch up with the times, you know, join us in women empowerment, raise them up kind of thing. I could go into all of that comment. That's actually not a very strong comment coming from a very powerful woman. That's a lot of body language. We're not talking about Patty and what she could be doing differently in her own body language to come across a lot stronger. Patty, if you want some body language coaching, I would love to give it to you so that you can come across really super strong as a woman and make a comment like that that actually anchors it in. Um, anyways, she says that she feels like this could be punishment enough if he lets it. Again, this is assuming that this breed of personality, this breed of human thinks like us underneath it all, and they don't. They just don't. I have not seen any proof that they think like the rest of us do in the world. Again, I would say this is, you know, 10%. I've seen numbers from 6 to 10, 6% to 10%. It could be a little bit higher of the population is this certain type of personality. Um, I, again, I don't think it's a personality disorder. I think it's a different breed. It just makes it a whole different ballgame when we stop to say that. They don't see it as punishment. Again, they have a way of viewing the world to see that Hannah's punishing herself by pushing Luke out of his her world, and she's the one that's going to end up alone, frustrated. I mean, it's probably he's probably laughing his head off, saying, "I told you so." When everything blew up with Jed, and this is a little Easter egg, that's because Jed happens to also be a narcissistic type, a toxic type, and we will look at why that is. And coming up episodes. All right, y'all, that was a lot. Thank you for sticking with me. I always think that I can come across and do this really fast, but there is so much education that we need in the world. So I really hope that you drunk this, drink this in. Is that the right tense? <laughs> that you drink this in, that you let it sit there, digest, come back to it, watch it again, go get the extended so that you can really tune into the body language and know even deeper why this personality needs to be identified and removed as immediately from your life as possible. Please like, share, do all those things that you know you need to do so that this information can continue to get out there so that we can as a culture take back our world for the betterment and the greaterness of all of us. And that sounds a little, yeah, but you know what I mean. <laughs> all right, y'all, so much love until next time. Bye-bye.